What's up, nerds? It's your boy, the OG GM, coming to you at 3 o'clock in the afternoon on a lovely spring afternoon here, April 2023. It's the sixth day of April. It is Thursday. It is the first night of Passover. Happy Passover, Shana Tova. And we have yet another leak from the now infamous Dungeons & Dragons creative content convention of confusion. And this is a sample of what the new weapons will look like in the player's handbook or whatever it's going to be called when we finally see it sometime in 2024. We don't know the date or anything, but we know that there's going to be a thing and it's going to have more pages and be more expensive and lots of art. Lots of art. Now, friends, I want you to take a minute to look at this and then, friends... Since, 2000, since day one, 2014, since we first cracked open the 5th edition Player's Handbook and realized it looked nothing like the playtest, what has been the number one complaint about 5e other than it's not Dungeons & Dragons? Friends, what has been the number one complaint about 5e since day one? It's too hard. It's too hard. The action economy of 5th edition is is way too clunky, way too hard, and inevitably bogs down to a disgustingly molasses-like slog. And as characters get higher level, especially once they reach the sweet spot of 5th through 8th, it just slogs down even more when you have action, reaction, free action, movement action, two actions, half actions, surprise actions, it's just lair actions, blah, just blah. Pound for pound, I would say the number one complaint about 5th edition, mathematically, is it's too hard. The action economy is just ridiculous. So you would think of the the the, the Herculean, Herculean, Herculean effort of changing 5th to fit the current 2024 audience into, into whatever it's going to be. Because remember, it's not 5.5, it's not 1D&D, it's not 6th edition anymore. We don't know what it's going to be called. D&D evolution, maybe? We don't know. You would think that the very first thing they would address mechanically is making the combat system less cumbersome. Making the mechanical engine that runs 5e less cumbersome. You would think that would be top of the list. I mean, you know, top five if nothing else. Maybe even top three. But yeah, d and is too hard. The action economy is too hard. It's too clunky. It doesn't work. It's nonsensical. It bogs down. And once characters start getting past third level, it bogs down even more. And a round of combat can take 20 minutes. So you would think they would make it easier. Nope. We are now looking at new and improved thingies that characters are going to get based upon things like mastery. So I guess we are adding a new mechanic to Dungeons & Dragons combat called Mastery. Now, we don't know at this point in time if this is going to be just alone to fighters. It's something that they can use. Or if everybody has access to Mastery, how the Mastery works. Is it like a training? Like, I have Weapon Mastery and Dagger. And so now I can use the Nick function. Why can't anybody use the Nick function? Also, how come a tree branch costs me one silver piece and a steak knife costs me two gold pieces. Who the hell is going to spend two gold pieces, two dollars for a dagger? I can literally steal one. And one silver piece for a club and two silver pieces for a quarter stack. You do realize that quarter cl clubs literally grow on trees. Literally grow on trees. I do not need to pay for a, one silver piece for a club. Or two server pieces for a quarter staff. It's a stick. Uh, looks like some prices have gone up. Some prices have gone down. Great sword is 50 gold pieces. Does 2d6 slashing. So let's just look at an example. Let's just look at the simplest weapon anybody can use in the game. The spear. Now a spear is a weapon that everybody, even wizards, should be able to use. It is one of the simplest weapons there is. Uh, it is one of the first weapons ever made historically you take a stick you put a sharp rock on it 
Uh, so if you take the mastery, you have the flexibility with it. Spears now weigh three pounds, one gold pieces. They can be thrown and they're versatile, which means they can, which is another feat. So in order to take full advantage of the spear now, you need to pick up this, uh, uh, this thing and this thing from mastery. What do we know about the mastery? We know that it was something that was discussed in the fighter. Um, but other than that, we don't know a lot about it. Uh, do we have definitions of these? Let's find out. One moment, please. Scanning. All right, so here's the definition. Uh, Nick. Offhand attack without bonus action, which generally seems to be back. I expect Robes to be able to use Nick on the dagger. So what does Nick give me? It, it, it doesn't say. just means, I guess, um, I can stab somebody with a normal dagger and then Nick them with my second dagger. Then we have something called slow. So I guess if you take the mastery with this, um, you can hit them and they are, their movement is reduced. Then we have Puncture, which gives you advantage on the next attack against them. We have Flex, which gives you versatile damage in one hand. We have Cleave, which gives you area damage. We have Topple, that lets you trip an opponent. We have Graze, which lets you damage them even if you miss. And we have Push, which I guess means if you connect, you get to push them back. Now, do these happen only if you have the Mystery, the Mastery ability? Do these happen if you roll a natural 20? Do they only work for fighters? Can anybody get these? Do I have to take one for each? Do I have to take a mastery in both club, dagger, you know, club and dagger if I'm a character that's using both clubs and daggers? What if I'm a wizard? Do I have to take mastery in quarterstaff? Are these going to be traits? I guess traits are now what replacing feats or whatever. Just, I don't know. Adding new mechanics to combat does not, make it easier uh, i mean you know it was you know just weapon specialization and improved specialization those were fine in the old days uh, uh, i specialize in swords okay you're slightly better than the guy who isn't specialized in sword i have mastered swords all right now you're really good with the sword as opposed to just some guy who picked up the sword so some guy picked up the sword Normal bonuses to hit, normal damage. Specialize in sword, let's give you a bonus to hit and a bonus to damage. Mastery in sword, let's give you a greater bonus to hit and a greater bonus to damage. Or maybe you can take two attacks around now with this your sword. I don't know. It should just be a simple, easy progression. Each class should have the ability to, if they wanted to, you know, pick that up for the weapons that they are acts have aspects to obviously the fighter having the most a access to the most weapons would be able to choose every level if i want to you know pick up a new weapon or specialize in an existing weapon a wizard not so much i've only got three weapons i could use but maybe once every three levels or once every five i would say like once a le once every other level a fighter could choose you know maybe uh, once every two or three levels, a cleric and a rogue can choose. Uh, and once every four levels, um, a wizard could choose one. So everybody would get one at first. Pick the one thing, you're, one weapon you're slightly better at than everybody else. You know, the fighter would pick his, his signature weapon. Maybe we'll call it signature weapon. The wizard, I'll probably pick quarterstaff or rock. You know, I mean, come on, I'm a wizard and you only give me three weapons to choose from. And if I'm in the position where I'm going to be using the weapons, I'm probably dead anyways. But, I mean, of my choices, what's best? I guess the stick. Because at least I can keep them away from me with the quarter stack. You know, and the rogue's going to be like, well, you know, I want to stabby them in the back the best I can. So I guess dagger or short sword. And the cleric's going to be like, the weapon of my face. So, yeah, I would say give yeah, everybody gets one at first level. Then, like, a fighter gets one every other level. You know, you could choose to pick up a new weapon. Or choose to get better in a weapon you have. Uh, and then the, the, the thiefies and the, and the clerics get one at first and third. And the wizards get one at first and fourth. And that seems way simpler than adding all this junk. Because I don't know, does, do I, every time I hit somebody with the club, do I slow them? Or just when I get a natural 20, do I slow them? Every time I hit somebody 
with uh, my hand axe, like puncture them and get advantage in my next round. That means I'm getting advantage every freaking round as long as I hit. I don't know. That doesn't. It just. It, Again, what was the number one complaint about Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition con combat? It was too clunky. It was too hard. The action economy made no sense. An otherwise pretty okay, generally mediocre engine broke down when it got to combat. Wizards of the Coast, in its infinite wisdom, decides to make it more complicated. Now, we don't know if this is cut and dry. We don't know if this will stick. We don't know if this is still being experimented. Are we going to see this in the next round of Unearthed Arcana? I guess we are. Uh, I mean, you know, the time, the, the, the clock's ticking down, wizards. It's April. You've got May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January. You've only got um, nine more months, and then you've got to at least tell us a general idea of when we will see the first product in 2024 for whatever it is this thing ends up being named because again it's not fifth edition it's not 5.5 it's not sixth edition it's not 1D D anymore it's dungeons and dragons fifth edition evolved for 2024 round one i guess i don't know i can we just like go back to just giving it names like you did with magic you know remember when they named magic expansions weird names like fork <laughs> What's the name of the next Magic of Expansion? Well, we don't want to give the real name, so let's, like, Phyrexia Invade, so let's just say it's Fork. How come, can we just call whatever it is we're going to get in 2024 Fork or Spoon or Haberdashery until you come up with an actual name? Because it's not 5th edition, it's not 6th edition, it's an evolution of 5th edition, was not going to fit on that book cover. But anyways, this, I guess, is going to be in the next round of playtest. I hope... Anybody who's actually played 5th edition will look at this and go, no, it's already too complicated. We want combat to be simpler. Remember, it's supposed to be simple, fluid, more about storytelling, more about how my character evolves their stories as while they're working at the Starbucks at Strixhaven, and less about combat, because combat in 5e is bad. So why would you make it harder? So hopefully all the Verukas will say, no, this is dumb. Combat should be simpler. It's the number one complaint people have had since 2014 about 5th edition is it's too freaking hard. But you tell me, what are you thinking? Do you like this? Do you don't like this? Do you think this is dumb? Do you think this is brilliant? Do you think this will improve combat or make it even worse? Do you even care? Do you just want me to stop talking about this? Well, too bad. I warned you at the start of the year, this is going to be the number one topic we're going to talk about. I warned you to put on your seatbelts because it was going to be a bumpy ride because we knew we knew as the final round of the race towards 2024 began, and this was even before the OGL nonsense, we knew that Wizards of the Coast was going to continuously spew out nonsense that we had to address in order to keep everybody else sane. I willingly suffer the slings and arrows of this nonsense so you can go to sleep safe tonight. And if you appreciate me trying to take this nonsense and boil it down to some palatable spoonful of cod liver, please consider subscribing if you haven't yet. It doesn't cost you anything and helps me immensely. The goal is 2,000 subs by the end of the year. We're at 1,300 and something, so I think we can do it. Please just subscribe. And remember, this is my job, so you, you could, you know, support me. And the best way to support me is either to sign up for my Patreon mailing list to get your monthly Minions on a Missions, or to head on over to Big Geek Emporium and purchase Minions on a Mission uh, directly from them. And I have just done a complete rundown of all the Minions on the Missions. And after I finish Minions on a Mission 11, we're going to readdress some of them and maybe do another redo through them. Because, you know, they could always be better, right? Right? I mean, I'm always open to what it is you guys want to see. So, till next time, I'm the OGGM. Hopefully, that's it for today. What do you think about this nonsense? See ya.